So, so just so you can understand. So look, the wagging of the tail and stuff is fine, but the whimpering is definitely what we, the whimpering is what we don't want. And can you see in his face, there's really that kind of like worry. Shh him a few times. So come and stand in front of me. Yep, just stand right here. Whichever one of you want to try. So see already how he's settling? Yep, so just say Nice, now ask him to go to his bed. On your bed, on your bed. Nice, now just wait a few moments. And now open the door and say come. Oh, wait, 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 close it. See how he started whimpering? Now open. Yep, and say come. Nice. And then when he comes in like this, we just want to ignore him. Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's episode, we've got a Cocker Spaniel with major separation anxiety. So this is a client got in touch, a dog howling all night, whining, scratching on the door, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and really simple solution, <laughs> which I find myself more and more recommending to everyone, which is great training. Uh, so in the first part of the clip, you'll see the obedience work that we did, but utilizing, he was food motivated and play motivated but he was super play driven. So I said, let's go into the park, let's see what you normally do. And it was a typical sort of ball throwing activity. And so I was encouraging her to, even if you utilize just a few moments of basic obedience, eye contact, sit down, that sort of stuff, and then throw the ball, not only does it build and strengthen the bond and strengthen the relationship, which is really what we want to do as, as our number one thing, it also drains their energy because you're mentally fatiguing them, you're stimulating. And so you can see when you do this over and over with the dog, it gets way more tired. So she'd mentioned in the past that she would take the dog for an hour, two hours of each where it ran around, but she had never seen it this stimulated and this tired, this mentally fatigued. It's a different kind of fatigue, it's a different kind of tiredness. Nice. So I would just be I would just be taking him by the collar with your with your with your left hand and then taking the ball. Yeah. Yeah. So we always want to make sure one command, two commands, if they don't listen, then we do what we're, we're saying. Yep. So we ask, we, we, we claim it. So he's going to come over. Yep. Nice. And then just go to him. Yep. So don't repeat the cues. Shh. Ask him to settle. Yep. And then just take the ball. Nice. So crouch down, ask him to come to you and just say it once. Just get in the habit of saying the cues once. Ask him to sit. So just once, Shh. wait for eye contact. High pitched yes when he gives you eye contact and throw. Yep, nice, so you just repeat, crouch down. Perfect. Nice. This is also the difference, you know, when I talk to people and people are like, yeah, I take my dog for an hour walk or an hour play and they're not that tired. They might be physically tired, but they're not mentally stimulated or they're not mentally challenged, I should say. Whereas here, he's having to just constantly think. Don't even say his name, just wait for him to look at you. Just wait, it's all patience. Nice. There it is, he, he looked at you there. So it's super subtle, but there's just this moment. So did you notice how I don't need to call him? But now he's with me. So I don't need to force him, I don't even need a leash, he's just with me. So. He's already got manners, but if he didn't have manners, I would just want to make sure that he was polite. See how he came, but he gave me distance. So I'm gonna go, yes, good boy. Whereas if he was trying to climb on me, I would move him away. I'm sort of talking to them, but I should also talk to you guys. Yeah, no, it's so he just gets the eye. So even if I put this down, he just knows I can only have that when it's given to me, rather than that's my food, mate. So he's, he's, he's trying to work out, yes. So he's trying to work out what other options, like what in my plethora of toolkit, like yeah. what in my tools, like what can I do to get more food? And he'd lay down. So even though that wasn't eye contact, I'm still rewarding that because it's a good behavior. Yeah. 
So that was because he was like, I told him already without physical pressure to give me space. Yes. But he, but he just went like, you know what, I'm going to test this guy. So I just gave him a little physical touch. Well, it's a good way to get him thinking, isn't it? Yeah. And this is again like how it just, everything compounds. So after you've done all of that, then you come in here to do this. It just keeps draining and draining. Yeah. Nice. Yes. So if this was the end of the game and he did that, I'd give him the whole thing. Yeah. Because okay. that it's like the jackpot. So whatever yeah. the jackpot is, yeah. 100x is that behavior. Yeah. So that him was like total submission and relaxation. I can jackpot that. I'm not going to do that yet. Yeah. So I'm going to show you guys a few things. So food game number one, this is like classic engagement training. Clip one. Clip one, thank you. Edie, not with that hand. <laughs> and so this is also a really good thing to do if you can't go outside, oh. which is just... Oh my gosh. Yeah. Surprise, it's fine. Yeah, and, and it's also really great to do in the grass because he has to use his nose yes. to find it, which tires him out even more. Oh, so yeah, using his nose is something that he That's not a strong point. Yeah, no. yet. <laughs> Yeah. But then the most important thing is I don't, don't give him. Don't find it for him, Edie. Just wait till he finds it. So I'm not going to give yeah. him. Okay, don't tell him. Come on, find it. Come on, find it. So I'm not going to give him another one because then he learns I can just stop looking and you'll yeah. give him one. Oh, see, you were just so close. Yeah, see how now he's, he's having to think He's, he's and learning and brain. thinking and oh, using his nose, guys. Done it. Yeah. Yeah, good. Good oh. job. And now I'm going to give him one because yeah. he did a good job. Yeah, so good. then I can also do like, sit. Basic obedience. Yeah. Down. Yes. Okay. Come. Sit. Yes. Sit. Yes. And I'm just, I'm just, it's like a little sequence, yeah. you know? I'm just mixing it up. Sit. Down. Sit. And so, you know, really understanding that like, all this kibble is great for the basic stuff. Yeah. And then we use the wet food yeah. for the walk. Yeah. So he starts to learn, oh, when I'm in the perfect heel position yeah. is when I get the wet meat. Oh, wow, yeah. So I'm not even saying sit. Yeah. I'm just communicating with him. Yeah. Yes. And so this is how you like, so what you're saying in terms of like engagement and yeah. connection, this is yeah. how it goes next yeah. level. So like what you've been doing out there, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Then this is the next phase of yeah. crate training. Since we started crate training with this dog, virtually zero issues. Just knows it goes in the crate, goes to sleep, relaxes, and going through the process of pairing, you come out of the crate when you're relaxed, and so the crate becomes a relaxing place, meals happen in the crate, I'm going to do a separate video on crate training, but I, I just can't emphasize the benefits of crate training enough. But it just gives our dogs a feeling of safety, a boundary, a feeling of home. And most importantly, it sets the dog up for success, which means if your dog is exhibiting these sorts of behaviors uh, and you're not there to correct it, then that behavior becomes reinforced. But if you have the boundary, if you have the boundary and the parameter of the crate, it allows you to minimize a lot of those behaviors from happening so when the right behavior happens you can reinforce it positively and when the wrong behavior happens you can negatively correct it or negatively reinforce it essentially nice so first i want you to let him out and just so you know he he got up he whimpered a little bit and i just went Shh, and he just lay down so i want you to let him out because he's being calm he's well behaved but oh yeah nice so wait hold it okay put him back in yep i'm gonna give you a little lesson nice so close the door, yep, and just wait. Now slowly open, if he starts to move, close the door. Nice, and just wait. When he gives you eye contact, welcome him out. Because we want his attention rather than getting out of the crate, on you. Yep. Nice. So I hope you enjoy the video. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. <laughs>